the first thing you've got to do is maximize performance. So if you've got yourself a device with 8 gigs of RAM, go into settings, then device care, and then into memory. At the bottom, you'll see the option to increase your virtual RAM called RAM Plus. Just switch to a higher RAM and restart your device. That's it. And now that you've got yourself more RAM, you might want more processing power. So go into editing your quick actions and pull out the processing speed button. Once you do that, just click on the label processing speed and you'll get the option to click on maximum. But turn it off when you're not using it because otherwise it's just going to drain battery. Now once you've got all that power flowing and you decide on playing a game, you might want to turn on Dolby Atmos for gaming. And to do this, go into your settings, then go into sound and vibration, and you can scroll down to sound quality and effects, and you'll see something called as Dolby Atmos and gaming options. Turn these on because they really leverage the stereo speakers of your phone to give you a more immersive experience. This is actually what makes your speakers sound really great. I don't even know why it's turned off by default. Anyway, your shiny new phone's display is really bright, but if you want that extra pump of brightness, there's a setting that you have to turn on. Go into your display settings, turn off adaptive brightness, and then turn on extra brightness. It's amazing. So if you want the best display experience when you're outdoors, this is what you need to do, but turn it off when you don't need it because otherwise it's just gonna drain your battery. Now, if you got yourself the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you paid heaps of money for a really sharp quad HD display, but that's not enabled by default. So again, go into your display settings and then scroll down to where it says screen resolution and then just switch to WQHD+, which is the sharpest display that you can get on this large screen. And then just hit apply and you're all set. There's a setting that you can change so that you get the best possible display experience every time you're watching videos. It's actually buried under advanced features in your settings. So go in there and then tap on video brightness. It's set to normal by default, but switch over to bright and you'll see some apps that are supported. So it automatically enhances your display experience when these are on. Now, a lot of times I'm hitting the bed and the screen is not dim enough, despite lowest brightness setting. But I've enabled a very cool accessibility feature, which when I tap, it just goes darker. And then I tap again and I can just get out of it real easy. And to enable this, go into your settings, go into accessibility and then tap on advanced settings. Now over here, go into accessibility button at the top. Make sure it's either set to navigation bar or if you want it to float over other apps, you can do that and then assign the accessibility button to extra dim only and nothing else should be turned on. So as you can see, everything else is disabled. I can also set the intensity that should be applied every time I turn on extra dim. So go inside here and then set the intensity levels. So I can actually go ahead and increase the intensity level. And so when I turn on extra dim accessibility feature, that's the intensity that's applied. You know why I prefer large screens? It's because I can see more in one go. But Galaxy phones, they don't ship with that setting in mind. And given both of these are the same phones, on the left you can see more, while on the right you can see less. And to enable this, go into display settings, scroll down to where it says font size and style, and just reduce this by one point. And then go back and go into screen zoom and reduce that by one point. It just fits more in one screen and I think it also looks a little neater. Now let's quickly go through some basic settings that you must change. And the first is that your phone is set to not vibrate when it's ringing, when you're getting an incoming call. You might wanna change that. So go into settings and then into sounds and vibration. And then there's an option called vibrate while ringing. It should probably be turned off for you, just turn it on. Then you might wanna go into call vibration pattern and switch to something that's a bit stronger for you. Additionally, you can go into vibration intensity and turn on vibration sound for incoming calls. Now, most Galaxy phones come with edge panels. And while most people think they're useless, I can change that for you. I have an edge panel that stores everything that I've copied, whether it's text or screenshots, everything in one place. So if I want to paste something that I've copied in the past, I could just hit copy and then go into the input field and paste, that's it. And so I don't have to keep copying stuff. I can just copy them in one go and paste as and when required. Now you're gonna have to turn this on. So go into display, then into edge panels. Make sure it's turned on. Then go into panels and look for clipboard. I obviously have it enabled already, but look for yours. It would be in here somewhere and just, you know, enable it, that's it. Now you'll have the edge panel on the top right corner. Just slide it and you'll see it right there. FYI, your phone can automatically maintain a log of notifications. So whether you miss them or dismiss them by mistake, 
you can always go back in time and look at those notifications and you don't have to install any third party app for it. Again, it's disabled by default. So go into notification settings and scroll down to advanced settings, click on notification history and just turn this on. Your notification logs will start appearing over here. But do note that it will only start creating that log after you turn this feature on. Your notification tray or the quick panel tray is actually pretty inefficient. Let me tell you a few things you should do. First thing you'll see is that the brightness bar for me appears in the first swipe down itself. I don't have to swipe down twice for the brightness bar and brightness is something you change quite often. So to do this, tap on the three dots, then click on quick panel layout and under brightness control, just select show always. That's it. And then it's going to show always whether, you know, you swipe down once or twice. It's easily accessible. Then there's device control and media output, which I don't use a lot. But even if you do, it does not need to show all the time. So go into quick panel layout again. And I just want to see it when I expand the notification panel. So it's pretty clean now when, you know, I just swipe down once. And I, I really like it. There's more space for notifications. And the other thing is there's so many of these quick setting toggles and I barely use all of these. So the best way is to just take those toggles that you don't use and put them back inside or hide them so that they're made unavailable. And you only have the ones that you use or you may use more frequently up front. It just A, it makes it clean and B, it makes it easy for you to identify the one that you're looking for. If you plan on putting any screen protector on your display, you might experience a bit of a lag in your touch experience. And to turn this on, go into settings, then into display and scroll all the way down to touch sensitivity. It would be turned off by default, just turn it on. It works better with screen protectors and I think it also helps when you're wearing gloves. If you got yourself the S22 Plus or the Ultra and you absolutely want to use it with just one hand, it could be difficult, but you can activate one hand operation mode but it's a setting you need to turn on first. Go into settings and then into advanced features and then scroll down to where it says one handed mode. As you can see, it's turned off. So go ahead, turn it on. But there are two ways to activate this. I actually prefer the button mode because it's just easier to operate that way. So just double tap your home button and that's it. Now you can choose it to be on the left or the right depending on which hand you're using your phone in. But just look at how small and convenient it gets despite a large phone. And you can also vary that screen size so it's perfect for your use. If you've happened to long press your power key, you'd notice that it actually opens up Bixby, which you may not really use a lot. But if you want to call the regular power menu, go into advanced features and then look for side key. And that's it. Over here, you can change those settings. So for press and hold, you can just shift from wake Bixby to power off menu. And now when I long press the power button, I'm going to get the power off menu so I can just turn my phone off. This is more usable for me. And for double clicking the power button, I think launching the camera is the best thing. Next, you absolutely must log in to your Samsung account. It's important for your phone's security and your data's security. So if you go into your settings at the very top, you'd see, you know, the name that you input in your device and then have the ability to sign into Samsung. Because when you do sign into a Samsung account, you know, your phone takes automatic backups. It keeps them safe. It helps you connect your experiences across different Samsung devices in which you should have also signed in. I mean, even if you lose your phone, someone steals it or you misplace it, you'll be able to remotely track it and perform operations like lock it or unlock it or make it ring or erase your data. It's really handy. I've done a full video explaining all the benefits of having a Samsung account and signing into it every time you're on your Galaxy phone. I'll leave a link in the video here. Check it out. All right, now for some camera stuff. So first of all, when your camera ships to you, the regular photo mode is on 12 megapixel. You might want to change to 50 or 108 megapixel for the highest resolution pictures. Next, when you're shooting videos, you can switch between all the lenses at any given point in time. So it's not like you have to pause your video. You can go in and out of different lenses simultaneously. Now you may see yourself struggle that when you turn on the selfie camera, you manually have to switch to the wide lens mode. Well, you don't have to do that. Just go into camera settings and then look for settings to keep. When you do that, you'll see something called a selfie angle. This would be turned off for you by default. So just go ahead, turn it on. And the next time you open your selfie camera, it will be in wide mode and your video settings are by default set to full HD and not 4K. So you might wanna to switch to 4K mode just to take more sharp videos. And lastly, you should get the Expert Raw app from the Galaxy Store. The highlight of this app is that it takes photos in 14-bit. That is so much information contained in the pictures that you take 
using this app that you can then play with it, you can experiment, you can manipulate it in so many ways using an app like Lightroom and really get high quality photos. By the way, the app takes two photos, one JPEG and one RAW, and you can see the difference. RAW is 29 MB. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I think those are some things you should absolutely change on your Galaxy S22, the Plus, and the Ultra as soon as you get it. Now, if you guys have any recommendations or questions, put them in the comment section. I pretty much respond to all of you. Thanks for watching, guys, and if this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon, mark on. Really helps the channel grow. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.